Hello, Firecatchers. This is Andrea York, and we are uh, have a brand new episode of Firecatchers uh, Chat. We are chatting again with Duchelle Jackson. She's part of our Firecatchers community, and uh, we have a lot to talk about. This is the second time we uh, I've been able to chat with her, and the first time she had some incredible testimonies um, and uh, of God's miraculous. Uh, help uh, by going because she went through a Hurricane Harvey and lost everything and it really happened again and so uh, if you've been in the group for a while you know you we were helping her and we just want to say a really big warm welcome to Duchelle thank you for joining me again today hi thank you for asking me and um, yeah twice <laughs> So twice. So tell, okay, so um, we're just a technical problems. I'm so not technical. We are fa Facebook live right now. I'm actually not if you're making comments, uh, we won't be able to see them until later. Uh, and then we're also recording it so that we'll put it on YouTube. Uh, so, so if you're just joining us a little bit now, you'll see it. Okay, so I just wanted to give that heads up. So, Dichelle, so tell us, okay, the last time you had Your a really Google great- Google Home isn't set up yet. To get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. <laughs> That's my Google, sorry. Sorry about okay. that. This is live. Um, so tell us, okay, tell us that, just run through what the recent trauma that you've been, that you have experienced. Well, I mean, it started out a day like any other, you know, and I mean, I knew we were expecting a thunderstorm, but I didn't know, you know, how severe, and I had drove all the way to Texas City uh, to take a girlfriend to go move some stuff, and uh, I was getting messages from people in Arkansas asking me, you know, are y'all going to flood again, you know, is it, is it bad, and I'm like, no, it's not even raining yet. On the way back, it was scary. I just, I just need to interrupt and say, can you actually describe, like, where, where is this? Just... Oh, I'm sorry, Vider, Texas. Uh, I was in Vider, Texas, and it's um, it's right on the Louisiana border, uh, probably about 10 miles from the Louisiana-Texas line. Um, we're in a little small community called Vider, and uh, it was, in fact, it's 90 miles south of Houston. But that's probably more. <laughs> People probably recognize that one, but uh, yeah, that's where we are. Sorry, sorry, okay, so keep going. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to make sure for any viewers that weren't aware of, of where you were, and then we're actually talking about the recent floods. What was that, six weeks ago? The recent floods that, that yes. Houston area, Texas area was experiencing. So you lived right. it firsthand. So so carry on. Let us let us uh, your story. So we were on our way back, and my husband called very concerned and said there had been tornadoes. Um, in a city that was probably maybe 30 miles from where we were that we were going to have to go through. And I remember thinking, I looked at my friend and I said, this is no storm like any other. This is bad. This is, this is really bad. And I let her drive because I was so scared to drive. I couldn't see. And where we drove through, there was actually people trapped for days in their cars. They could not get out. And they were surrounded by water. And it was, this just came on so suddenly that, I mean, people didn't have time to react. And I got home, whew, I'm safe, it's all good. You know, we went to bed. Three o'clock in the morning, I heard my son, my stepson, um, him and his uh, four-month-old, two-year-old daughter, and his uh, girlfriend had been living with us, staying with us for a little while. And he said, Dad, water's coming in the house. And I just sat straight up and I went, this is not, this isn't happening again. You know, and I thought, it's just a little water. And it just, it, then the lights went out. So it's pitch black. And we're scrambling, trying to figure out, you know, and I was in shock. I literally froze and couldn't move for a good two hours. I watched him just, that's, this isn't happening. And then you start praying, you know, God, please stop the rain, stop the rain. And um, it didn't stop, you know, it just didn't stop. And uh, I remember at one point saying, God, where's the mercy? Where's the mercy? And, you know, I'm talking to my best friend who lives just a few blocks from me. And she's crying, let's pray together. You know, rain stop. And I just... You go through so, you know, so many emotions at that time that it just, and when it doesn't stop, you know, you're just like, gosh, why? You know, it's just, it was devastating. It really was. It was, um, you know, it was hard. So, so it's, I mean, you must have gone through 
so many emotions. I can't imagine experiencing it at one time, but this is the second time. So, um, and then the enemy is going to come in like, oh, what kind of lies? So what kind of lies was the enemy telling you at this point? And I went from denial. I mean, at one point I said, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> you can't, you have to get up. We have to, we have to put things. He was stacking things and I was, no, I'm just, I have my little dogs. I said, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I give up. And, um, you go through hopelessness to, and I think anger was the emotion that lasted the longest for me. Um, I was mad. I was, I was very angry and, you know, I was angry at the city. I was because of the drainage and I was angry at this and I was angry at God. I mean, I, you, I would be lying if I said I wasn't. I was angry. You know, why God would you put us through this again? You know, and I just kept hearing in my spirit, he's conditioning us. You know, he's conditioning us. He's conditioning us. I don't know what's next, but he's preparing us for whatever's next. And whether it was the move to let go of the old and grab the new. Um, we had been talking about moving for a long time out of the area. But our feet were frozen. You know, I don't like change. <laughs> so it's hard for me to adapt to new. And so it's all new now. And, you know, and it's uh, six weeks later, I can say, Phew, I feel normal again. But I was, I, it was, it was shock. It was anger. It was sadness. Grief. You grieve. You grieve for everything. So you said you were woken up at three in the morning uh, with from your your stepson saying there's water coming in and when did you actually have to vacate we could not leave until now the kids we got told them get out get the babies you know get somewhere safe and you know we didn't know how much of the city was flooding because you know at Harvey it was nearly all of it this time it was kind of just certain areas but we didn't know that and we couldn't leave till daylight till we could see where we were going because there was a lot of people went out at night and tried, they missed the roads. They ran off the roads. They were going into water and you know, we just, we knew it wasn't safe at that point. So we had to wait till daylight. And as soon as it was daylight, it had gotten so deep. We had, to leave. I mean, it was, it was probably way steep when I, when I got out and, um, and all of our neighbors are, are at this little, one little green section, you know, of grass up the road, a couple of blocks and right by a gas station. And that's where everybody just kind of stayed um, for about 24 hours, literally because you're landlocked you can't go anywhere because the water's so deep around you so but the gas station let us use the restroom you know, they, they were still selling gas they were still selling food water things like that so then you just kind of cling to each other because you just don't know you know what to do at that point and um, a lot of people started voting in trying to help and do what they could and a lot of young people I mean 14 15 in boats helping people out of their homes and things so it was um and I was just like, this isn't happening again. I was just looking at my and saying, this is not happening again. It's happening. It's happening. You know. Yeah. It's hard. I to, I, so, um, I mean, sometimes in, in, in crisis, did you, were you, could you actually hear God or, or, I mean, sometimes when I'm in crisis, I don't hear God because I'm, I'm so <laughs> anxious about everything. I was, when I, when I waited in, when I realized I didn't have my Bible, my flags, and I needed a picture of my mom, that's all I could focus on. And my husband said, you're not walking back up that road and through that water. I said, yeah, watch me. And I got, <laughs> by the time I got to that, I was just in tears, you know, and I was just, I was yelling at God at that point. And I was just, why, you know, God, where's the mercies? Why are you doing, you know, the neighbors are looking at the ones that didn't leave or just looking at me and I'm just, I'm sobbing one minute and then I'm like, but it's, you know, but I grabbed my, that's what I went in, my instruments for God. And that's what, that's what, my, that's all I grabbed. And on the way out, I was just broken. It was shattered. And then you think, what did we do wrong this time? You know, and it's, that's the devil in it, it's lies. And it, it, we felt all alone. You know, um, our last kid just graduated from college and moved out and you don't want to drag them back into the chaos. So it's just like, we're all alone. That's, we felt very alone. And, uh, and, and y'all street rallied and then they meant so much. You know, my mom's gone. I don't have a lot of support system. Um, family's out of state. And so it was like, I could feel God the minute y'all started reaching out. That's when I started, you know, kind of having faith again. I did. I, I had lack of faith and I've had to ask God, forgive me for my unbelief. Forgive me for my lack of faith in those moments. But I, it was, I was angry. You know, I couldn't understand. 
confusion. And God is not a bitch. And it was clear cut. You know, I'm removing you from here. And I'm, you know, I've got new for you. Just let go of the old. And it was hard. It's been hard. Yeah, because he's a, he's a, he's a loving father, right? Like he, and, and a father doesn't, I mean, those lessons, there's, there's beauty in the lesson in, in what he does. But I just want to be clear. He does not send this kind of destruction. Yeah. He does not send this con- dis- destruction, but he will use it. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Romans eight twenty eight says, uh, everything works up for good for those that love God and are called according to his purpose. So it's, so there's, he will use everything that the enemy sends at us. Uh, and he, and, and the the enemy is the prince of this air. He's the prince of the, of this world that we live in. And so he causes uh, chaos in, in whatever, in whatever capacity he can. And you, you got it. You were involved in it twice. Now tell us, so when you, I think you posted in fi- the fire catchers group that day while you were waiting. Was that, is that right? I think when I reached out and asked for prayer, I didn't have shoes on. Um, I mean, that's how long I stalled. I just, I, you know, I, I would have sit there and let the water overtake me. I mean, that's just with that moment. That's where I was at. I didn't want to move. And, you know, and, and then my husband's yelling at me and I'm yelling, my sister's on the phone. God love her. And she's trying to you know, just be calm. You can't panic. There's, you know, and I'm just like, ah, I was irrational. You know, it was just all these different emotions. And, um, and I, and I know I kind of did an update where all the debris, everything he owns on the curb. And that day I flagged, you know, and um, even when it hurts, I'll praise you. And I said goodbye to my stuff at that time. And I said, I will not come back. I will not, you know, I'm not coming back. To it. And I haven't, you know, I haven't went back. To it. And, and I, I knew I couldn't grab the new if I didn't let go of the old. And that, that was hard. Um, you know, lots, a lot of things that I had scared, was scared to bring to my home because of Harvey that belonged to my mother. I had just brought into the home two weeks prior. So photos, things like that. Or, you know, it was on. It's just like, ah, <laughs> you know, but God showed me it's in here. It's in your heart. You carry that, but nobody can take that. No storm, no devil, no, nobody can take that. The love that I, that she gave me while she was here, the devil can't take that. I mean, he can take a photo all day long, but he can't take that. And so that's been, it's been a big learning lesson. You know, um, I've been fighting, kicking and screaming the whole way, but it's, it's just now I'm starting to kind of come out of that and see, hey, this is actually kind of better, you know, than where we were. We were kind of stuck in our circumstances and it was hard to move. It, it so. kind of actually reminds me of the, uh, so we're in November and the featured flag is the gift of God. And, and there was a lot of things that, I mean, he gives us so many gifts. And as I was creating those flags, uh, what the, what the verse that the Lord gave me was out of song, um, out of Proverbs, uh, about enjoying, it's just, it, it's not, it's not all of the things it's actually enjoying food on the table and the relationships around it and, and being able to, that, that is such in this world where everything is fake and everything is about the stuff that you have. The, the gift of God is to enjoy the fruit of your labor to enjoy what the, the things that are close to your heart and it's not flashy. They're mundane, they're routine. They're going to the doctor's office with your, with your daughter, uh, with Angela, they're the dogs that you'd get to take for a walk. They're those moments of worship. That's the gift of God that he gives us. And so you are learning a very tough lesson that I don't think any one wants to learn and you've right. learned it twice you're smarter you're two, twice as smart as the rest of us now <laughs> you know sometimes it's i'm stubborn so i say i'm hard-headed but he did give me a gift um probably you know there's a homeless man i, I have a ministry called ash where i would give out backpacks and love and 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 i was at the family dollar just sitting there crying in the car one night and this man came up to me in a long beard dirty his name is Gene. And Gene said, I want to give you something. And he tried to give me money. And I said, no, 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 you keep your money. He's become my friend. Uh, you know, I would see him 30, 40 minutes. We talked about God. And he showed me, taught me how to be content and joyful in my circumstances. 
no matter what they are. And he actually showed up at our apartment um, about a week ago. Didn't recognize him, shaved, clean. And he said, you know, the love y'all showed me has made me want to be better. And he's now in a program. So that to me, that makes it all worthwhile for me. Um, did, you know, he showed me love in a time that it was so, I said, she's my, I told my husband, I said, I think I just interchanged an angel <laughs> when I got home. Because I was crying, I was laughing. And the last thing is, I want to show you something. Because he was showing me something. I said, I pulled out my flags and showed them to him. And it was just like, wow, you know, and, and we made a connection and he would show up on his little bike, you know, about when we would talk about God or I'd see him at the laundromat and just, and, and he, he kind of brought me back to where, like you said, you know, back to the simple things and things that really do matter. It's not about stuff. It's about, you know, the internal thing. And if that man can be happy with no home and show me love and light, you know, in, in, in such, you know, in his circumstances, then I need to learn to be content in mine. And it, it was, it was conviction immediately, you know, but it, a wonderful friendship has come out of it. And it's, it's, it's put everything in perspective, you know, um, and hopefully he'll pass that on to somebody else. You know, it's just, it's neat. And, and I, I needed it. I needed that. I needed that encounter. And it was totally gone. You know? <laughs> I really didn't think I'd ever seen it again. I said, I really believe it was an angel. And so, you know, it's, it's awesome to see a good turnaround like that because you don't see that. Um, you can love on them. All, you know, but sometimes their, their circumstances need to change or they don't want better. You just love them where they're at. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's been great. That's, that's, a, that's amazing. The, yeah. the testimony of transformation, that is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Even the fact that he was going to give you money. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he ended up giving me a chili pepper, a little plastic chili pepper. He said, are you hot or are you cold? And for a minute, I had to think about that. And I said, what do you mean? He said, for the Lord. And so, and he would start a scripture and I'd finish it. You know, he'd say, to be absent from the body, I'd say, to be present with the Lord. And so we would, you know, it was really, and I was laughing and I felt joy for the first time since the storm after I left him. I, didn't want to, I probably stood in that parking lot for an hour showing him my flags and, and just, we were just talking about it. And my husband said, where'd you be? And I said, I just think you're an angel. I'm just sure of it, you know. And, and then I would see him around town and he, you know, he's quite a fixture around here. And I didn't recognize him. He thought that was funny. He giggled and he said, you know, you didn't know who I was. <laughs> no, I didn't. He said, I'm going to clean up. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm That's gonna amazing. I, what I like about that story is you, you, um, when we actually see people, the way that Jesus sees us is that all of us have baggage, like, <laughs> And all of us, but all of us have something to give. Like you've been loving on him and he came uh, and Jesus used him to love on you in a moment when you needed it. And I, I have to say, I saw the fire catchers rally around you. And I, and I loved to, I loved to see that. And I loved um, just to see them, you know, like prayers are great, but cash is necessary. Yeah. Like cash is needed right now. <laughs> <laughs> and people started like, how can we send you money? How can we send you money? And so, um, it, you don't have to have a lot like this gentleman, he gave, he offered something to you that he didn't have like really anything. So we don't have to wait until such a time that we're so, you know, financially set. Um, we're supposed to love each other. And that actually means doing something for each other. Prayers are great. Prayers are necessary. Prayers are your first, can be our first, but um, love is action. Yes, it is. And I, you know, there, there were moments that I, my husband and I both become so overwhelmed and he'd say, Oh my gosh, somebody, you know, this person sent an email and they, and it was all fire pitch, you know, and it was just, we would both just sit and sob, you know, it, we give so much of ourselves, my husband and I, we both from our home, you know, we always give, 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 but it's hard for us to receive, I guess. And so we didn't have a choice. It, it was my, that was the money that people sent us to the fire catchers that kept us from sleeping at a gas station. You know, that kept us where we had a safe place to bathe, where we could regroup, and pray together and be in private and, and mourn together, you know, and it's, this has brought my husband and I even closer this moment. But you think, you know, I didn't realize that we were that far apart. So we have to, that we're like, it's a small space. So we're, there's no escaping from each other or going to another room or, or diving into another life. So you're distracted from what's going on. It's brought us closer 
and and it's a connection with this group there's a bond that I can I mean I'll never you know be able I can never thank there's just no words it's just not enough words um the gratitude that we have for y'all you know it's just we'd never ask for help that's that's how we are <laughs> we're you know and it's it, maybe it's pride but it's just I'd rather give than receive and so it, it was hard but it was necessary and it, it was the difference between survival and just you know really literally being at a gas station I wonder because we couldn't even get back into our home for days I mean, the water didn't receive like it should have it was a long time before we, at least four days before we get in our house even get in there to see the damage so so what's what's next we have moved um to orange texas which is probably 15 minutes uh, tops from Ryder. it's closer actually this is the first city you come to when you cross the louisiana texas line um we're in an apartment um it's just me and him and the dogs and i think we have since the day we got married 10 years ago we have not had an empty room uh, we have filled it with homeless people whoever needed a place and i think this is time for us this is us time to be together, just us in one, one room bed apartment with our little animals and um, grow closer, you know. And, um, I'm going to keep loving, doing my homeless stuff, um, and just in a different area. You know, God's changing our, he's strengthening our territory. He's moved us, I think we had done all we could do there, and now he's moved us to another territory. And I'm not really sure what's next. <laughs> I'm not sure. We have a year lease here. So we have a year to regroup and figure it out. But um, we talked about going to Arkansas, where I'm from originally. Uh, somewhere off the coast <laughs> would be nice <laughs> for me. So uh, that's kind of where I'm aiming at. And we're, we're second story. I asked for the second story for <laughs> I want where water can't get. If water gets here, then it's like, no, it's biblical. <laughs> so um, I'm just, yeah, he hates the stairs, but I'm, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> Yeah, you, you kind of, do you, do you, can I ask, do you actually have like still residual fear? Do you have fear? Do you have to fight fear? It, it, it's PTSD. Uh, it's classic. Um, I work with blind amputee, uh, I have been with a blind amputee veteran for almost 10 years as his assistant. And so I'm also an auxil auxiliary member of the blind veterans. So I deal with a lot of PTSD and, you know, I always associate that with war. I've never really associated with like trauma. And this is definitely, me and my husband were both classic symptoms. I mean, I don't sleep. It's hard to eat. It was hard. You know, you jump, you're jumpy. Uh, there was a time when I didn't want to be around people. I didn't want to be, you know, my head was down and I just felt insecure everywhere I went. And so I'm starting to finally come back to myself. But it's it's total. I mean, if it rains or hit thunderstorms, I mean, I start to panic. It's like, I don't want to be in a car. I don't want to be, I don't want to be anywhere. I don't even want to hear the rain. I used to love rain. And I, so it's weird. It's just uh, because this wasn't an actual hurricane. This was a tropical storm. And so we never expected this to happen again. And it's going to happen again because it's a drainage issue. And um, I don't even know we're near it, you know. And so it is. You, you, you do live a little bit of fear. And I know that fear is not of God. You know, that is the devil. So if I start to feel that way, I'll say out loud, you know, just straight up, devil, you're a liar. You know, that's that's how I get through. That's how my husband gets or if he hears me kind of say, the devil's a liar. That's kind of our code word for regret. Pray. And, yeah, that's yeah, beautiful. Okay. And, and I, I know that you posted um, photos of uh, like just worshiping. Just, I mean, this is how we, we fight. We get into the presence. We get into the presence. It's not that um, because then we get the heavenly perspective. Now, now, how can we, how can we continue to pray for you moving forward? You know, just, just strength. Um, encourage you know it's it's scary for me change is real um that used to be my go-to when i would run i would run from things and so it's been real important for me to be grounded and stable and you know and, and rooted somewhere and so i just feel like everything's just been yanked back out from under me again and i you know i kind of lived that life where i just moved everywhere anytime i want i just packed up and moved and my poor kids went to 26 different schools and that was you know so that's always been my thing and I don't want to do that anymore so I, I, I feel like you know where, where does the where do we go now you know so there's a lot of a weirdness for me to try to you know I don't want to do that I don't want to just keep running I want to be planted somewhere where God can use me and you know be stable and uh, hopefully that that's my main thing and my husband's is you know a man of the house wants to be the man of the house he wants to be able to leave he doesn't want his wife here he doesn't want 
um, things to get out of control. And when they, he, to see him broken, that, that's the hardest for me because he's pillar of strength. He's a man of valor. And, you know, he prays, we pray together every, you know, on our knees every night. And to see him hopeless was hard. And so there's days he's still, he's still struggling. And um, he feels like, he, he, and he said, he said, I feel like a failure. And it rains on the just and the unjust. And, you know, I, I want to affirm him and I just, you know, remind him who he is, that he's God's son and that God would didn't punish us. This is just something that happened. Um, God will use it for the best. You know, he'll turn. What is, uh, his name is Anthony, right? Anthony, yes. He goes by Tony. <laughs> it's Anthony. And, uh, I'm you know, the first it's been just, weird we had this is empty nest finally for the first time ever and so we thought we had all these plans how it was going to be this is not what we had in mind so the last kid just moved out when he graduated and so it's like oh so you know we have to learn to, to just adapt where we are and make the best of it and hopefully there'll be more genes you know down the line that uh, you know that we can reach out to and uh, i don't have to bring them all home <laughs> Meet them where they're at and love them there, and because uh, I have, you know, my I just my heart that's where my heart is. Okay. People who have nothing, and so. Michelle, uh, you are so. It has been. It's so encouraging to speak with you. This is now the second time we've got to do this. Uh, I appreciate you so much. I appreciate your heart, your generosity towards uh, the ministries that you do, and I want to just pray for you, uh, you. and and Tony in the ministry and your future. And I, I, I'm sure that other people have quoted Isaiah 43 to, to you as well. But I just keep thinking when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. I, I feel like even though it seems, well, no, that's exactly what happened. Um, God is in it. I will be with you. And, and I just, I, I know that as a believer, um, I know that I know that that's my God, that he's with you. Right. And so let's just, I just want to pray. Father, I, I thank you that Dechelle is with us and Tony, that they have gone through this trauma, not once, but twice that they lost everything in hurricane Harvey. And then they've lost everything again, but it is the gift of God. It is the gift of you to enjoy the things um, that our laborers provide to us and, and just the enjoyment of food on the table and um, flags in our hand and worship and, and the people. It's about the people. Um, and just even the blessing that, that they are to their community, that they're now in a new community, that you're expanding their territories. I pray that the things of, of her heart are that you would, you would do the things that are in her heart, that, that she wants to be grounded and not just, I, I just sense it as a, a grounding and making the ground fertile where she is so that she will not only get to um, sow the seed or reap the harvest, but she will sow and reap in the same place. I pray that that would be, um, that, that that is your plan for her and that she would get to enjoy that, that the gift of God to sow and reap in the same place, that there would be deep, deep roots um, where, they, where they are, where you place them next, that you are um, covering them and you're helping them through the recovery of the trauma. Um, we pray against any spirit of fear um, that, that you are, there is no fear in you that perfect love casts out our fear that you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, um, love, power, and a sound mind. Uh, I pray that you would increase the authority that Dishal has over the elements, over the, over the earth. Um, that says even the wind and the waves obey you. And the same that Jesus, you are alive in her and the authority and the power is within her because you are there and Holy Spirit is there. And I pray that she would actually rise up, that this would be um, a place where she, she gains authority and that she is a covering for others. 
just like this gentleman that that uh, they would she would actually see transformation in the lives that she touches thank you that she so um, selflessly and generously gives to others and provides to others and and thank you for that touch of love where it was received back and I and I am so grateful to see uh, love in action through the fire catchers um, that we got to experience that, that we got to um, be part, be part of it, and, and love on her. And um, strangers or no, that that's we're family, and we're called to do, to do that. We're called to support each other. We're called to help each other because, um, I mean, just because you loved us so much, and that that they were be able to experience that kind of. Um, um, receiving when you can't give anything back it um and that she was just able to receive that love um as if it was from you direct from your hand and it was we pray father for uh just the unity that they that her and tony have together that they would continue to move forward that they would continue to be healed together and move to through recovery together thank you for her daughter angela who we saw the last video um, who's about to give birth that is experiencing some uh, problems with the pregnancy so we just ask that you would protect that little baby that little boy in her in her womb keep him safe until the t until the day that he is to be revealed um, in all of on all of his perfectness uh, so father protect the baby protect mom Angela and the, and her and the dad um, just keep fear and discouragement away the enemy is not to just have put a hedge of protection around their minds and around Dechelle and as they pray for that little baby uh, that's that's going to be born and it's going it's going to be perfect um, so thank you for your gifts father thank you for your love father thank you um, that you restore all things that are lost that that you were that you are the restorer uh, and so we ask that you would give back to them um, even seven times what they've lost and we have taken it but you promise that you'll give seven times back and so in jesus name amen oh thank you so much you're welcome i'm going to stop